Okay, so in this video, I am going to share some tips and just give you a walkthrough of how I go from here to this stage of the drawing. And uh, I get it, like it seems intimidating, especially if you're a beginner, like how do you even go from sketch to a rendered piece like that? And you will find many resources which will give you those conventional tips. And by the way, they really work, just don't skip them. But they're going to state how you should go about it, like how you should learn Loomis method and learn a little bit of anatomy and then learn about values, how to hold your pencil, how to sharpen them. But for this video, the idea actually came when I was talking to my friend and this idea, this little idea kind of popped in my brain. Like, why do people find it difficult to make portraits or draw anything? Like, hell, I even didn't really think about it until that point. Like. Is it really that difficult or am I just getting intimidated by the references? So this theory that I have is just about learning how to stay with the drawing, basically. So many people, just these beginners, I used to do that myself. Like I didn't really have that much patience. So I just started scratching the paper as soon as I saw the reference without actually understanding how to go about it. And it's not even that big of a spoiler, but it is not a good idea. Like when you see a reference, you should understand it and you should try to simplify things. And believe me, if you have not consciously made an effort to simplify things that you're seeing in the reference, then you're missing out. And if you can just learn to simplify things, or you can also call it out of unseeing things in a way, because you're ignoring the details that don't really add to the subject and uh, yeah, if you can get good at simplifying things and reducing the reference to the things that make the reference what it is. So basically your each mark should be with the intent that whatever I'm putting down on the paper, it's kind of a part of the average value that I see. Many people use the method of squinting their eyes, which reduces the portrait or whatever the subject is into these value shapes. And these value shapes, they have a particular rhythm and they arrange themselves in a particular way. So that's what makes the subject what it is. And you don't even really need all the details to process it as a portrait. I think your mind has just seen enough faces. So whenever you see the similar arrangement of value shapes, it kind of does its own thing and registers it as a face, even if you've not put down the details. So worrying about the eyelashes or the hair strand that is flying out, that is not a good idea because that is not actually what makes the biggest contribution. And people have different ways of working. Like I get that. Like I was the kind of person who used to work inside out. Like I would start with one eye, render it completely, and then I would move to the next eye and then the nose and then render the lips and then that's how I would just go about it. And that is just wrong for so many reasons. Like if you're working inside out and you have the proportions all wrong, then your drawing is already screwed. It's like having a great interior in a house that has a wobbly foundation. And again, this is going to be subjective, but I just think it is better to like work on the whole drawing as one thing than singling out a single part and then just going at it before you move on to the next thing like i have so much appreciation for hyper realistic artists but it's not really something that i would want to do like i want to have that stylized look where you can see the brush strokes and the paintings or the marks that i'm putting down on the paper like individually if you were to zoom in like that's the style that interests me the most and if you're like me and you're also into that kind of a drawing or the paintings, then you would know that it is not exactly replicating everything that the viewer sees or the painter sees. It is more about understanding what makes a person look the way that they are and understanding how you can capture the beauty and how you can capture the essence and reflect that on a sheet of paper. And this idea that I have that I suggested before about simplification of things and how drawing is not as difficult as people make it out to be, uh, that is something that changed the trajectory of uh, the way I was going about my drawings. And it is such a beginner thing and even I'm not a stranger to it and I used to be like, okay, I'm going to make this the best drawing that I've ever made and I'm going to draw every strand of hair and every eyelash and I should have just sat down. <laughs> like I should have just sat down and understood about simplification. 
because guess what? The eyelashes or the flyaway hair that you see on the other hand, they're not really that important and they're not what, it's not something that amounts to much. And you're so much better off just focusing on the big picture stuff. So just for the sake of an example, I have a really shit example, but I cannot really come up with anything other than that. So <laughs> assume that you have a group of thousand people and 50 of them are wearing black shirts and the rest of them are wearing white shirts. And if someone asks you to just indicate the average value of the colors that the people are wearing, then you're likely going to say white. And you're likely not going to get disturbed by the fact that 50 of them are wearing black shirts because that is not something that affects the average value to that extent. And you need to have that same way of thinking when you're drawing. So especially with the simplification exercise. So assume that you're drawing the right side of a cheek, right? Don't be intimidated by the portions of it that are lighter or darker. Don't be intimidated by the part of the cheek that is receiving that side lights or the ambient lights. And it also helps if you work in relation to other things. So if I was drawing the cheek area again, then I would just keep in mind that it is a tad bit lighter than if you compare it with the eye socket area like that is definitely darker so when i was putting down the values i would make sure that that area is lighter and i would just stop it at that at least for the first layer then i would just call it at that point i would not be worried about okay this is darker the zygomatic bone is receiving a little bit more light and that like that is the way to screw up your drawing like don't push yourself too much and don't process too many details in the earlier stages and the same kind of thing can be applied all over the drawing. And it's not really limited to portraits. It's it's really something that applies to every drawing and every painting. So even if you were to consider other part of the drawing, like let's say the neck area, then I would just compare that neck with the values that the jaw has. Like, okay, the light is coming from her left hand side and the jaw is really covering the neck area. So the neck is not receiving that much light. So it's definitely going to be darker. And then stop it at that. Like put down the value an average value and stop it at that it's not that it's not going to be that difficult don't complicate it for yourself and only when you're done with that basic essence capturing stage of the drawing then you can move in like then you can worry about that little highlight that the zygomatic bone is capturing or the dark hair the eyelashes the eyebrows or the highlight that the lower lip is catching and it also kind of reduces the pressure and the nervousness that you people might face when you're drawing like, okay, the details are out, then it's just a simple big picture stuff. I think when you go about your drawings like this, it the other rules just kind of fall into place and they kind of come in sync and you don't really need to worry about them. For example, if you're intentful with each mark, then you don't really need to worry about the rule that, okay, the different objects are not really separated by a harsh line. Because again, if you're intentful, then you will already have that in place and uh, you will already have taken that into account. And really, when has it ever really helped you out, even in life, to like focus on those little things and those little shortcomings? Like those little things, they don't really define what you are. Just like that little detail that you're worried about in a drawing, it doesn't really add too much to the drawing and uh, its contribution is not significant enough. So work in groups and work in fragments and just know that the next time you pick up your pencil and you're about to make a mark, then each line is just that, which is a part of an average value that you see and what makes the subject what it is in reality. And uh, if you have that kind of an intent with each mark to represent what you see in your own beautiful ways, then that is really what makes a person look like a person in portraits. And you still have a margin of error when you're drawing landscapes, but in portraits, yeah, you're, you're not, you don't have enough room to like wing it. So yeah, I think I would just call it at this point. And uh, if this video helped you out, then I'm glad. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one.